Hello, I will be exploring the basic structural and functional features of the Platelet derived growth factor or PDGF. A brief introduction PDGF was one of the very first growth factors identified and isolated, and as the name implies, it was first identified in platelets. It has a 172 amino acid sequence and consists of one alpha helix and eight beta pleated sheets as seen in the JML video on your screen. It's a dimeric molecule that occurs as a homodimer of PDGF AA and BB or as a heterodimer of AB. And these polypeptide chains are linked by disulfide bonds. PDGF is a very important mitogen in early development. It induces and activates mitosis in several cell types. It is expressed in endothelial cells, fibroblasts, vascular smooth muscle cells, glial cells, and neurons. So, although it was first identified in platelets, it has been its expression has been seen in many other cell types now. It directs the proliferation of undifferentiated neural progenitor cells, which I like, and mesenchymal cells, which are multipotent cells that give rise to bone cells, muscle cells, cartilage cells, and fat cells. PDGF is very important in alveogenesis, villus morphogenesis, spermatogenesis, oligodendrogenesis, palate formation, formation of blood vessels. As you can see from this, you will not be who you are today without the function of this small dimeric molecule. How does PDGF perform its very important roles? It's really interesting because it's a type of signaling called autocrine signaling, which is signaling in the cells that express PDGF have cell surface receptors that PDGF binds to to stimulate intracellular cascades. And these receptors are known as PDGF alpha or and beta and PDGF binds to them and these are tyrosine kinase receptors as I'll, as I'll talk about moving on with you. PDGFs bind due to a protein motif called the cysteine knot fold. It's characterized by three disulfide bridges and this is what helps it bind to the receptor and causes the receptors to dimerize. PDGF binds to the extracellular domain of PDGF alpha and beta and this binding triggers the homo heterodimerization of the receptors as shown to the right of your screen. And what then kicks off the intracellular signal transduction cascades is the phosphorylation of the tyrosine 857 residue in one of the receptor monomers. So it's transphosphorylation in that one of the monomers phosphorylates the adjacent one. And this is what activates intracellular signal transduction. One very important uh, pathway is the phosphoenostide 3 kinase, uh, protein kinase B pathway. In, as shown here, PDGF binds to the receptor tyrosine kinase, which phosphorylates PI3K. And then proceeds through a series of phosphorylation reactions that culminates with protein kinase B, which is the hub of several signal transduction cascades. Shown here, we have the cyclin dependent kinase, which is an important cell cycle regulator checkpoints in the cell cycle. We also have several enzymes that take part in glucose metabolism, ATP citrate lyase, glycogen synthase for gluconeogenesis, we have hexokinase and glycolysis and the PFK FBP switch that we discussed extensively. So as we see here, several important pathways and enzymes are downstream from the activation of the PDGF receptor by the binding of PDGF. This is really important. But the overexpression of PDGF can be a, a very bad thing. Overexpression of PDGF has been implicated in several tumors and other diseases that are characterized by excessive cell proliferation like atherosclerosis 
and lung fibrosis. Due to this, several therapeutic strategies have been developed. Antagonists of PDGF signaling have been developed. Shown here, you have a DNA aptamer that binds to PDGF. And this prevents PDGF from binding to its receptor. We also have inhibitory antibodies against the receptors and inhibitors of the receptor kinases. And beneficial effects have been observed in clinical trials as treatments for atherosclerosis and lung fibrosis. In summary, PDGF signaling is very important in early development and maturation. And the structural properties of PDGF and its receptors have been elucidated by crystallography data. But the overexpression of PDGF and its receptor activation have been observed in cancer, atherosclerosis, and other diseases. But we have seen that the inhibition of the binding of PDGF to its receptor holds great promise for the treatment of these conditions. This is a very exciting area of study, and I hope I've been able to give you a window into, all, into what this entails. Thank you very much for your time. Have an excellent end to the semester and, and a wonderful summer. Thank you.